Happy Sunday, Pilipinas! At isang magandang araw naman sa lahat ng ating mga kababayan sa buong mundo na sumusubaybay sa ating programa. Sama-sama muli tayong matuto sa loob ng kalahating oras na talakayan. May problema ka ba sa iyong property? O pinapalayas ka ba sa iyong tahanan? Nasa tamang channel ka, kaibigan? Dahil ngayong gabi, kikilalanin natin ang ahensya ng gobyerno na naatasang ayusin ang mga hindi pagkakaunawaan pagdating sa human settlements o panahan ng pantao. Ito po ang programang sumasalamin sa tama, maayos at may malinis na layunin. Ito ang FYI. Last week, nakapangayam natin si Undersecretary Penelope Penny Belmonte ng National Anti-Poverty Commission na nagpaliwanag ng mga mandato at programa ng NAPSI ukol sa poverty alleviation ng ating bansa. This time, tampok sa ating episode ang Human Settlements Adjudication Commission, ang ahensya ng gobyerno na naatasang resolbahin ang mga problema patungkol sa property disputes. Para mas makalala pa natin ang ating guest agency ngayong gabi, panorin natin ang report na ito. Ang Human Settlements Adjudication Commission o HSAC ay isang quasi-judicial body na may adjudicatory functions sa ilalim ng Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development o DSHUD. Sa Visa na Republic Act No. 11201, ang HSAC ang ahensya ng pamalaan na nagbibigay ng equal access to legal process tungo sa mabilis, mapagkakatiwalaan, patas at tapat na pagresulba ng mga gusot kaugnay sa usaping Housing and Real Estate Development and Transactions, Land Use and Homeowners Association. Sinisuguro nila na maayos na naipapatupad ang Housing Provision of Republic Act No. 7279 bilang tugon sa mga ipinapatupad na panukala ng Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. Silip pa lang yan ng ating usapin ngayong gabi. Dahil sa ating on-point discussion ay uusisahin natin at aalamin ang mandato at mga programa ng Human Settlements Adjudication Commission o HSAC para magbigay ng dagdag kaalaman at ipaliwanag ang mga karapatan ng homeowners makakasama natin via Zoom si HSAC Commissioner Sergio Emano Yoyokyap at Attorney Dina Peña ang officer in charge of the Legal Assistance Division ng HSAC Legal Service. Good evening po, Commissioner Yap at Attorney Peña at welcome po dito sa FYI. Uh, good evening, Yusek Chris. Uh, I'm here with uh, Attorney Dina from the Human Settlements and Education Commission. So, we are so happy to be uh, 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 attending now the FYI program. The issue po, the department is new and so is the commission po. Para sa ating mga viewers, uh, pakishare naman po ang mandato ng Human Settlements Adjudication Commission. Okay, um, Yusek, uh, and to the viewers, uh, pursuant to Section 4 of RA 11201, otherwise known as the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development Act, it's a it's a new law uh, passed last 2019. Uh, there is hereby created a Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development or DISUD to the consolidation of the former Housing and Urban Development Coordinating Council or HADC and the Housing and Land Use Regulatory Board or the HLRB. DISUD uh, shall act as the primary national government entity responsible for the management of housing, human settlement, and urban development. It shall be the sole and main planning and policy making, regulatory program coordination and performance monitoring entity for all housing, human settlement, and urban development concerns, primarily focusing on the access to and the affordability of basic human needs. It shall develop and adopt a national strategy to immediately address the provision of adequate and affordable housing to all Filipinos. 
and shall ensure the alignment of the policies, programs, and projects of all its attached agencies to facilitate the achievement of such objective. So meanwhile, Section 12 of the same law reconstituted the former HULRB into now the Human Settlements Adjudication Commission or HSA. The adjudicatory function of the former HULRB is now transferred to HSAC and it shall be attached to the suit for policy planning and program coordination only. So with the confirmment of the adjudicatory function of the former HULRB, HSAC has uh, vast uh, coverage or jurisdiction which will be uh, discussed by Attorney Dina. So Attorney Dina, can you uh, elaborate on the jurisdiction and coverage of our commission? Okay, thank you, sir. Um, good evening, Yusek and the viewers. Um, under RA 11201, HSAC um, has jurisdiction over the following cases. First is um, cases involving subdivisions, condominiums, memorial parks, and similar real estate developments. Um, included are the following actions concerning unsound real estate business practices filed by buyers or homeowners against the project owner or developer which cause prejudice to the buyers or committed with bad faith and disregard of the buyer's rights. Second is claims for refund and other claims filed by subdivision or condominium unit buyer against the project owner, developer, dealer, broker, or salesman, provided that when the cause of action arises from the buyer's rights under Section 23 of Presidential Decree Number 957, um, ito yung non-development, uh, and the purchase price of the property is paid through a housing loan from a bank or other financing institutions, um, such bank or financial financing institution shall be included as a necessary party. Okay, third is cases involving specific performance or contractual or statutory obligations arising from the sale of the lot or unit and development of the subdivision or condominium project. The most common case here is uh, yung delivery of title. Number four, disputes involving open spaces or common areas and their use filed by the project owner or developer or the duly registered homeowners association including the eviction of informal settlers therein in accordance with the requirements of law and the rules and regulations promulgated by duly constituted authorities. Example of uh, uh, open spaces under PD 1216 are parks, playgrounds, recreational uses, schools, roads, places of worship, hospitals, health, cen health centers, barangay centers within the subdivision. Okay. Fifth is um, suits to declare subdivision condominium or other real estate developments within the regulatory jurisdiction of the dissuit as abandoned as defined under section 3 of RA 11201 for the purpose of section 35 of presidential decree number 957. And then six is disputes involving easements within or among sub subdivision projects. And seven, actions to annul mortgages executed in violation of Section 18 of PD 957, filed by subdivision lot for condominium unit buyer against the project owner and or developer and the mortgagee. Um, this violation is the failure of the developer to secure the mortgage clearance from um, the HLURB before and now the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. Okay, we go to next uh, cases involving homeowners associations. First is controversies involving the registration 
and regulation of homeowners associations. Um, but uh, for the information of everybody, the registration po and the regulation is with the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. But the controversies shall be uh, within the jurisdiction of the HSA. Second is intra-association disputes or contra controversies arising out of the relations between and among the members of HOAS between any or all of them and the HOA of which they are members. And then, inter-association disputes or controversies arising out of the relations between and among two or more HOAs, between and among federations and other umbrella organizations on matters pertaining to the exercise of their rights, duties, and functions. And disputes between such HOA and the state insofar as it concerns their individual franchise or right to exist and those which are intrinsically connected with the regulation of HOAs or dealing with the internal affairs of such entity. Um, for the information of everybody, um, if uh, the HOA for you to avail of reliefs um, sa HAC, uh, you must first be registered with the department. Otherwise, uh, madi dismiss you your case. But the unregistered HOA can still be sued by the uh, by the members or the homeowners. Okay. Next, uh, next is disputes involving the implementation of Section 18 of Republic Act 7279 as amended by RA 10884 and its implementing rules and regulations. This is the UDHA, uh, the Balanced Housing Development. Okay, next is disputes or controversies involving laws and regulations being implemented by the DISUD, except those falling, except those cases falling within the jurisdiction of other judicial or quasi-judicial bodies. That's all, sirs. Uh, thank you po, Attorney Dina. Uh, Kom Yoyok, uh, just to clarify, no, you've, you've already mentioned that uh, wala na po ang uh, HUD-C, wala na rin po ang HLURB, and actually this was replaced by the HSAC. And nasabi po ni Attorney Dina kung ano po yung uh, jurisdiction po ng HSAC. Does this mean po that uh, kayo lang po ang quasi-judicial body ng Dishud family and there is no other quasi-judicial functions outside po of HSAC at kayo lang po kasi nasabi na po ni Attorney Dina na kayo na po ang in-charge po sa subdivision disputes, condominium disputes, pati na rin po ang mga HOA disputes. So kayo na po ang sole uh, quasi-judicial body or function ng Dishud. Tama po ba, Kom Komyoyok? Yeah, yes, Yusek. So, so the viewers may know. Um, uh, sometimes, kasi may mga confusion pa rin and some some would file in the regular courts. So, so now the regu the regulatory function of the HADC and the HLRB before nasa disod na and the adjudication uh, is now with the uh, uh, HSAC. So. Lahat ng mga cases, controversies, uh, as mentioned earlier by uh, Attorney Dina, uh, are handled now by the HSAC. So we will discuss the procedure later and or the legal process as to the filing of cases under HSAC. May mga nakaredi pa pong mga katanungan dito, Commissioner Yap at Attorney Dina, pero pause po muna tayo para sa ilang mga paanala. When we return, bibigyan natin ang kasagutan, ang problema ng isa nating kababayan. Huwag kayo maglilipat ng channel. Mababalik po agad ang FYI. What is Freedom of Information? The Executive Order on the Freedom of Information mandates government institutions under the executive branch to provide the public access to information. Information means records, documents, papers, and government research data. 
Through the FOI, every Filipino can now access records of the executive branch. To know your government better, visit www.foi.gov.ph for more details on the FOI. And we are back dito sa FYI. Kasama pa rin natin si Commissioner Sergio Yoyokyak at Attorney Dina ng HSAC para magbigay ng mga payo at ipaliwanag ang mga karapatan ng mga homeowners. Pero upang mas mapalawak pa ang ating talakayan, dumako muna tayo sa kwento ng isang concerned citizen na lumapit sa ating programa. Tutugunan natin ang tanong ng taong bayan. Dito yan, sa Sagot Kita. Nagre-rentoon ako ng unit. Dati nagre-renta-renta lang din, pero na-realize ko, sayang din naman yung pera. Halos magkaparehas lang din naman ng monthly, eh yun nga, hindi na mapapasa akin yung unit. So, I finally decided to find a rent-to-own unit. So, ayun, may nahanap naman, at pasok din naman siya sa budget ko. Pumirma na din ako ng kontrata, and mag-usap na din man kami, at nakapaglipat na din ako ng unit ko. Pero yun nga lang, after kong lumipat, biglang nag-iba. Biglang may mga sinisingil na sa akin ng mga hidden charges na hindi naman namin napag-usapan ng umpisa. At saka, hindi din siya nakalagay sa kontrata. Tapos ngayon, pinapressure nila ako na bayaran yun since nga nakalipat na ako dito sa unit. Um, ano po bang maipapayo ng pamahalaan regarding my situation? Um, yeah, um, as a purely quasi-judicial agency kasi, similar to courts, uh, we consciously refrain from giving opinions to the public or parties pertaining to factual allegations on a controversy, much more if it already involves a pending case. This is to maintain impartiality, the impartiality of the Commission, and to avoid judging a controversy or forestalling the decision of an adjudicator or the commission. As mentioned earlier, um, it is the Department of Human Settlements and uh, Urban Development um, which exercises regulatory functions. They provide legal advice or assistance to the public. In this case, the decision may enlighten the party as to what are the uh, lawful contractual stipulations or the valid obligations of a real estate buyer or seller. Um, the party uh, may request the dissuad for conciliation, so to avoid so to avoid a lengthy and costly litigation if sa age shock. Um, if uh, the parties fail to settle amicably, um, that's the time that the party can file a verified complaint with the HSAC. Thank you po, Attorney Dina, for that clarification. No? So, uh, hahabulin po natin si ASEC uh, Ave Tolentino para dyan uh, dahil siya po ang legal ng dissuad. Maraming salamat po sa ating concerned citizen na nagtiwala at nakibahagi sa ating programa. Para sa lahat ng ating kababayan na nais magkwento at maging bahagi ng talakayan, bukas po ang aming programa para sa inyo. Bisitahin lang po ang ating Facebook page na FYIPH Official at mag-iwan ng inyong mensahe. Sa puntong ito, balikan na natin ang ating on-point discussion with Commissioner Yap and Attorney Dina Peña. Uh, Commissioner, maaari niyo po bang i-share sa ating viewers ang legal na proseso sa pagresolba ng mga dispute relating to housing and real estate development and transactions, land use and homeowners associations? Kung may viewers po tayong nasa ganitong sitwasyon, ano po ang aasahan niyang proseso? Ngayon pong uh, naging HSAC na po kayo coming from uh, HLURB, ano po yung mga bago? ng mga features ng HSAC na in-improve on ninyo mula po sa HLURB. Go ahead, Commissioner. 
um, you said um, the age tax clear process is similar to other quasi judicial bodies such as the National Labor Relations Commission or the NLRC. This means that it does not involve a trial type hearings like that observed by regular courts. Initiatory pleadings such as complaint and answer can be done using the complaint and answer form or template provided by the ASAP, either accomplishing it manually or downloading digital copy thereof and encoding the entries therein. So it does not normally require the engagement of a private counsel or lawyer, although it would be wise to have one. Uh, it is initiated with the filing of a verified complaint, as mentioned by Attorney Dina, uh, before our regional adjudication branches or, or RABs. And thereafter, the other party's filing of its uh, verified answer. So within five calendar days after the receipt of the answer, a mandatory conference will then be conducted, among others, to join the issues as well as to explore the possibility of an amicable settlement through mediation proceedings. If the parties still fail to arrive at a compromise, they are required and need only to submit their respective position papers in lieu of an actual trial. The submission thereof shall be done within 15 calendar days from the receipt of order to submit the same attaching thereto the affidavits of their witnesses and other documentary evidence. So the case is then submitted for decision when the parties have filed their respective position papers or when the period to file the same expires. So i mabalis lang siya na proseso uh, you see Chris so ay, hindi na magwari yung yung mga parties. In fact um, some parties would, would, would make their own position papers, but if mahirapan, they can uh, hire a private lawyer for purposes of filing the position paper. But nonetheless, the adjudicator can still decide even without a position to submit by a case. So, under Section 56 of the 2021 HR Rules of Procedure, no motion for reconsideration shall be allowed upon the judgment of a regional adjudicator. The proper remedy is to appeal uh, the same to the Commission within 15 calendar days from the receipt of the regional adjudicator's decision. So now, pursuant to Section 57 of the said Rules of Procedure, uh, the following are the provisional and special remedies that, that can be availed of by the parties. This is crucial, you see, Chris, kasi para alam na mga tao na ano yung iba nilang pwedeng i-avail na remedies under the rules or under the law. So one is a creation of management committee. Ito yung ano, uh, you say Chris, yung parang nag-aaway-aaway. So kailangan muna na may mag-manage ng subdivision ng HOAS. So yun yung mag-create ng management committee. So yung anomaly, it's three, three persons. So one is nominated by the Complaina, the other is the from the respondent, and the third will be decided by the adjudicator among the list of nominees. So another remedy is the preliminary preliminary injunction. This is uh, formerly under the old rules. This is yung cease and desist order. So naging ano na siya, iniba na siya under the new rules, uh, writ of preliminary injunction. So there's also a contempt. So, you see, Chris, medyo powerful din yung commission because we can actually uh, cite uh, a party in contempt. So, and third remedy is inspection of books and records. Uh, fifth is the enforcement of compromise agreements executed by the parties in conciliation proceedings before the dissolution. As mentioned earlier, merong uh, sabi ni Attorney Dina na parties can can opt to uh, avail of the consultation proceedings with the disuit pag may mga problema sila. So, pag meron ng compromise, tapos uh, ayaw mag-enforce, uh, pwedeng mag-file ng proper petition to our commission for the enforcement of such compromise agreements. So, uh, and we, uh, under our ano, ad rules, pwede din mga applicable provisional and special remedies under the rules of award. So now it is very important to mention, 
uh, you say, Chris, that uh, pursuant to Section 106 of the 2021 HAP rules, uh, the commission sitting in bank shall resolve the following. So, merong uh, petitions for review for its preliminary injunction. Uh, second, appeals from decisions of local and regional planning and zoning bodies. So, you say, Chris, uh, uh, we are going to coordinate with the LG para mga LGU malalaman nila na ano yung mga decision ng mga zoning authorities can be appealed to the uh, to our ASAP. So third is uh, cases involving novel issues with policy implications upon the endorsement of the commission division to which the cases were, were originally raffled. Fourth is appeals from the judgment or orders in election contest under Rule 21. So fifth is the motion for reconsideration of judgment or orders rendered or issued by any of its division as provided under Section 123 of the 2021 HAP Rules of Procedure. So all other appeals shall be resolved by the Commission Divisions. A party can now file a motion for reconsideration of any decision of the division to the Commission in bank. So kanina, I mentioned kanina na you see Chris na pag decision ng mga regional adjudicator walang uh, motion for reconsideration. But mga decision ng division sa commission, pwede nang i-appeal through motion for reconsideration to the commission in bank. So, thereafter, the decision of the commission upon any the disputed matter may be appealed by the agreed party to the Court of Appeals in accordance with Rule 43 of the Rules of Court. So, uh, HAC's process is more simplified and less stringent procedurally compared to that of the regular courts. It aims to be speedier and less costly to the party. So uh, we are so happy that uh, we'll be part of the this process to give a uh, easier, uh, easier way for parties to resolve their cases. So um, we're hoping that uh, with our new HSAC now, uh, with the commissioners, we can help uh, in resolving cases as soon as possible. Thank you, Yusuf Chris. Uh, thanks, Commissioner Yoyok. No? Maganda po na meron po tayong ibang remedies katulad po ng Management Committee ang pag-issue po ng preliminary injunction at hindi po required na magkaroon ng abogado. Wala na po tayong uh, oras. Uh, Kom Yoyok, ano po ang ating last message sa ating mga viewers ng FYI? Go ahead, sir. Okay. Um... Hey, uh, you see, Chris, uh, and the viewers, uh, HAC is relatively a new commission as it only started uh, as such last uh, January 1 of 2020. We are still in the transition and adjustment stages, as well as the hiring stages to fill in the vacant position in our commission, including in all our regional adjudication branches. Despite our manpower challenges, Apart from the pandemic problems, we will continue to do our best to resolve cases pending before us. HSAC has recently promulgated its HSAC Rules of Procedure, which became effective last March 21 of 2021. Together with the DISUD, uh, we started our public forums and information drive in relation to the homeowners' issues with a discussion of the Public Act 9904 or the Magna Carta for Homeowners and Homeowners Association and its implementing rules and procedures. And the new 2021 HAC Rules of Procedure to properly inform the public of their rights and the appropriate remedies in addressing their complaints against developers and or fellow OA members. So for more queries, the public can contact HSAC through its Public Assistance Division at email info at hsac.gov.ph or call us at uh, plus 63-947-882-6297. Our central office is located at the new HURB building 
Kalayaan Avenue Corner, Mayaman Street, Diliman, Quezon City. So, uh, dagdang salamat, Lucy Chris, Attorney Dina, and to every everyone who are watching tonight, uh, mabuhay and stay safe to everyone. Maraming salamat po sa paglalaan ninyo ng oras para magbigay ng impormasyon dito sa FYI, Human Settlements Adjudication Commission, Commissioner Sergio Yoyokyap at Attorney Dina Peña. Mabuhay po kayo, stay safe, and God bless. Alinsunod sa Republic Act 11201, nabopo ang Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development o mas kilala bilang DISHUD. Ang departamentong ito ay naatasang manguna sa Housing, Human Settlement at Urban Development sa ating bansa. Isa sa mga ahensya na nakapaloob sa DISHUD ay ang Human Settlements Adjudication Commission o ang HSAC. Ito ang isang quasi-judicial body na may adjudicatory function. Tungkulin nito na mga siwa at mamamagitan sa mga hindi pagkakaunawaan kaugnay sa real estate developments, ang mga homeowners associations at pati na rin sa lokal at regional planning and zoning. Lalo pang mapapadali ang proseso dahil may nakatalagang adjudication branches sa bawat rehiyon. Kaya naman, mahalagang malaman ng taong bayan na mayroon silang malalapitan kung sakaling sila ay magkaroon ng problema sa kanilang panahanan. Up next, mga komento at reaksyon ng netizens ang ating susunod na tututukan sa pagbabalik yan ng FYI. Get to know your government better. Access records through the FOI. There are two ways. Standard and online. For standard FOI, step one: write a request to the agency and comply with their requirements. Step two: 15 to 35 working days processing time. Step three: you will receive a message when the information you need is ready. For online requests, step one: search the information or the agency. If it's not yet available, make a request. Step 2. Wait for the email regarding the status of your request. Step 3. You can now review the information you need via email or through a government website. Visit the FOI website for more details. Nagbabalik po tayo dito sa FYI. At this point, tingnan naman natin ang reaksyon ng netizens tungkol sa topic ngayong gabi ukol sa Human Settlements Adjudication Commission. Basahin natin ang mga komento ng netizens mula sa ating social media accounts. Ito ang Share Ko Lang. Mahalaga sa amin ang inyong boses. Kung kaya naman ay inaanyayahan namin kayo maging bahagi ng FYI. Mari nyo kaming sundan sa ating social media accounts. Bisitahin lang po ang official FYI Facebook page at ang official Facebook, Instagram at Twitter accounts ng FOI Philippines. Kung kayo naman ay may nais malaman tungkol sa pamahalaan, bukas po ang foi.gov.ph para sa mga impormasyon na is nyong i-request mula sa dumaraming bilang ng mga ahensyang kasama natin sa ating EFOI portal. At syempre, makakasama nyo rin kami sa FOI sa radyo o FSR. 
Kababayan ganyan tuwing Biyernes, alas 6 hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa Radyo Pilipinas 1, 738 on the AM at sa bayang mapapanood sa lahat ng digital platforms ng TCOO. Lumipas na naman po ang 30 minutong hitik sa impormasyon na talakayan. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagsama sa amin tuwing linggo ng gabi. Hangad ng ating programa na maghatid ng information for the nation. At sa pamamagitan ng mga ahensya na kasama nating linggo-linggo, na ilalahad na namin sa inyo ang mga detalye tungkol sa mga gawain, mga proseso at serbisyo ng mga ito. Ang bawat ahensya ng pamahalaan ay may tungkulin para pagsilbihan ang taong bayan. Kaya palagi nating tandaan, ang kaalaman ay karapatan. Information is always the key. Ako po si PCOO Undersecretary and FOI Program Director Chris Ablan at ito ang FYI.